Hi guys, well today I'm going to build this vintage style toolbox. Um, it actually holds five different levels of tools in here. Um, it's made with box joints uh, and in white oak. So let's go build it. So this all started because I've been getting into leather crafting lately. So I got a whole bunch of new tools from Tandy Leather. And so far I've had them in this bucket <laughs> and it's extremely frustrating because each time I need a tool I pretty much have to empty the entire bucket to find whatever I'm looking for. So I figured that's ridiculous and I should build a toolbox that can house this stuff. For material I'm going with white oak and I think that really fits. White oak is such a perfect material for a toolbox, really strong and beautiful. And when I was thinking about this box, I kind of pictured those vintage style box jointed camera boxes or microscope boxes full of instruments and equipment. So that was kind of the look I was going for. So first of all, I did a lot of milling to get this wood to size. I resawed it on the bandsaw and I didn't want the wood too thick. I was going for about 10 millimeter or 3 eighths of an inch. Here I'm using the jointer jig for getting clean edges to glue up panels. As well as using a hand plane. A lot of this box is gluing up pieces for panels and just cutting everything to size. To connect everything I decided to go with box joints. I made this jig a while back and it really comes in handy every now and then. I decided to go with quarter inch box joints because I think that looks nice and proportional and I cut up box joints for several boxes here in different sizes. And uh, while cutting this I'm wearing my favorite bright red mask. I always get a ton of questions about which mask I use. So this is the RZ mask, which I really love. I think these are great because you can replace the filters when they get dirty. I love that they come in lots of different colors and different sizes too. And I find them very comfortable, which is pretty important when you spend so much time using them. And yeah, I'm using them throughout this project. So what are all of these different boxes I'm making? So first of all, we have the main box. I decided to simply glue on the top and the bottom pieces and that worked out well. Then there's a separate box underneath which the big box will fit into. And here I'm just preparing the wood for that. Here's a little tip. If you have several thin pieces that need to be flattened out, you can plane them all at once, like one board. Inside the big box I have a tray, which will sit in the middle of the box on top of the lower dividers. And that's the basic design. After gluing up the big box, I'm cutting it open on the table saw. And it was a little nerve wracking doing this cut because I was nervous I was going to mess up the box in some way but it turned out well. And I just love this concept of making a closed box and then cutting it open. It's really cool. I also need dividers for the main box as well as the tray. So getting pieces in order for that. At this point I figured I should uh, probably try this out and see what's going to fit in here. So I got some tools in the lid and then trying to find where's the best place for everything. I 
As I was doing this, I realized I could use another level and some smaller storage. So I decided to make two small boxes using the same technique, box joints, and then cutting the boxes open. So uh, doing some sanding, and here you can see that I used thicker oak, about half an inch or 12 millimeters thick for the bottom box, and that's because I need to do a rabbit on the router so the big box can sit inset, kind of like providing a lid in a sense. So I'm using a quarter inch rabbiting bit going around. And then I cleaned up the edges with a chisel. To make everything a little bit more organized, I have a divider here for the tray, which I'm gluing in. And this also functions as a handle when you lift the tray up. And I added those extra blocks to provide a bit more gluing surface. For the bottom of the big box, I also need dividers. And this is to keep things organized and to raise up the tray. At this point, I was able to do a test fit with everything, <laughs> and I had also put on some hardware on one of the small boxes to test it out, and that's when I realized that I had made the small boxes a touch too big. <laughs> they fit perfectly without the hardware, but they were a bit too big with the hinges and the clasp on. So I actually took them to the table saw and sliced off a thin slice on each side of the boxes. After that they fit much better, so I'm really glad I used oak because it's strong enough even though the walls of the box became much thinner. And here I'm putting on some small hinges and this really nice clasp which I just love. Next I put on the hardware on the big box as well and I've got some beautiful heavy duty antique brass hinges. I also got some nice latches in the same finish. Now the screws protruded on the inside of the box a bit, so I used the Dremel to grind the points down. And uh, yeah, that worked really well. For a finish, I decided to go with one of my favorite, the waxed shellac. Of course, this is a toolbox, so I'm not crazy about a perfect finish here, but it is nice with some protection. Since this is a toolbox for leather tools, I thought it would be nice to integrate some leather in the box. So here I'm cutting up some pretty thick 8 ounce dark brown leather for handles. I decided to double up the leather for the main boxes, and I'm just using contact cement to connect them together. Also, I'm marking out where I want those handles on the boxes and then applying contact cement on the wood and the leather and letting that get tacky before setting together. I also stamped two labels in the same leather, toolbox and leather, <laughs> and I glued this on as well. To make sure the handles are strong and secure, I'm actually sewing them to the boxes. So marking out holes, then drilling and sewing through with heavy duty waxed thread doubled up. And this provides a really nice and secure connection. I also got some beautiful upholstery tacks, which I'm adding to the label for a nice touch. And finally, I'm finishing all the boxes with my raw linseed oil beeswax polish. And I make and sell these in my shop at tarpnorway.com if you're interested in picking up a tin for yourself or gifting one. Okay, so all in all, there are five levels in this box system. <laughs> so let me show you how I organized everything. Level one is the lid. And when you open up the box, I placed my most used tools there. I simply secured them with some elastic band and the tacks, which seems to work well. Level two is these small boxes. And in here I have my stamp sets, which I've been using quite a bit. And I love that they are out of the plastic packaging and that I can take a box out when I want to use a particular set. 
Level 3 has tools I use pretty often. Punching tools for making holes, putting in rivets, etc. Level 4 is the bottom of the main box, and here I have some of the larger tools, which I don't use quite as frequently, but I still want to have access to. Level 5 is the bottom box, and in here I have a variety of rivets, zippers, hardware, and leather scraps. And if anyone in the area is looking for a great place to find some hardwood, I'm leaving a link in the description to the local business where I picked up all this oak. Okay, so here is the finished box. Now, when I was first thinking about this design, I was thinking about these vintage style, old like camera boxes uh, with the box joints and the oak and the proportions as well. So that's kind of what I was going for here. Um, I think I did accomplish that in the general look, especially with the hardware, and I kind of like that it's like high, it's kind of tall like that, it looks kind of cool. Another thing that I really like is that each part of the box can be like, if you need a specific tool, you can open it up and take the tray out or take that particular box out or take this underneath part, like everything is modular in that sense. So it's not like all stuck inside the box, like drawers that you can't get out. And I think that just makes it more practical uh, in terms of working with it. Another thing is too, I built this box because I want to be able to bring it between the makerspace that I'm working on and the shop. Uh, so all the tools are in one place. Uh, so this is definitely a lot better than the plastic bucket I had everything in previously um, and a lot more organized too. Don't forget to check out the links in the description uh, for all the products that I used to build this box. Also, if you did like this video, make sure to share it. Uh, not to mention subscribe to my channel uh, for more project videos. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.